Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Today I thought I'd talk about a common thread that I see in questions and comments. Many people get a little bit confused about where a power slash SWR meter should be connected in a station with an antenna tuner. There's really no right or wrong answer to this question. It depends on what it is you want to measure. With the IC7300 or any radio with a built-in tuner, you don't really have a choice in where you're going to connect an external meter. It's going to go between the radio and the antenna. If you're using a radio with an external tuner, then you have the choice of putting the meter between the radio and the tuner or between the tuner and the antenna. Let's take a look at how this works with the IC7300 with the internal tuner. As you can see, I have the SWR meter connected with my ICOM, and, and the little diagram that you're seeing here is how they're connected up. Basically, the meter is between the radio and the antenna. Let's just make sure we have a clear frequency here. QRZ is this frequency in use. Whiskey Alpha 2, Italy, Victor Delta. Whiskey Alpha 2, Italy, Victor Delta testing is this frequency in use. Now well, I see one station up above me, but 10 meters is getting pretty quiet already. All right, so we are clear on the frequency. I'm going to put the radio in ready mode, which on the 7300, if you key the mic in ready mode, it'll just put out a solid carrier. Let's turn the radio volume down so that's not bothering us. And we have the power set at 50%. And I'm going to take the tuner out of the circuit. So you see the little tune indicator went off on the screen there. And if we just key the radio, let's get all the meters up here, sorry. So if we key the radio, we see our output power is about 50%, and our SWR is just a little bit over 2 to 1. And if we look at the external power meter, we see 50 watts, which should be just about 50%. And the SWR is where the meters cross, which is just under 3 to 1, maybe, I don't know, 2.8 to 1 or so. So the meter's reading a little higher SWR than the radio is. And that's not uncommon because this is not a calibrated meter. And I don't know how calibrated the indications are on the ICOM radio. In fact, I looked in the manual before I was videoing this and... It doesn't say anything in the ICOM manual about how accurate or calibrated any of the power or SWR meter readings are. All right, now we're going to bring the tuner in the circuit and we'll actually make sure it's tuned. So now we have the antenna tuner inside the radio is in the circuit and we'll key the radio again. And now we're still showing 50% output on the radio, but we're showing SWR basically one to one. And if we look at the external meter, the, the power has actually gone up just a little bit now, but that's probably because the radio is not folding back because it was seeing a little over two to one SWR. But if we look at where the needles cross, the, t the external meter, still sees a almost 3 to 1 SWR. So why is that? Well, as many of you have pointed out in comments over the years, an antenna tuner doesn't actually tune the antenna. It's kind of a misnomer, but that's what they're commonly called. The antenna tuner inside the radio is matching the antenna system, which includes the antenna and the coax coming into the house. And in this case, it includes the antenna, the coax coming into the house, and any effects that this external meter has, which should be small. 
but it's matching that to the 50 ohm impedance that the radio wants to see. So the radio sees a one-to-one -one SWR, but the SWR of the antenna hasn't actually changed at all. Or I should say the antenna system, because in my case it's the antenna plus, I don't know, about 40 or 50 feet of coax coming into the house, plus another little section of coax going from my antenna patch panel over here to the where the radio is. So there you have it. The antenna tuner does not change what you're going to see on the antenna. A number of people have had questions and comments over the years of, well, why, why do I still see the high SWR after I tune the antenna when, when they're using an external meter? And that's because it doesn't change the antenna at all. It only changes what the radio sees. Now, if I had an external tuner connected here and we connected the SWR meter, an external one, if I connected it on the antenna side of the tuner, then it would see exactly what we're seeing here. If I had an external meter and I connected it right after the radio and before the external tuner, then you'd see exactly what the radio is seeing and the external meter would see what looked like a one-to-one -one SWR once the tuner had been tuned. So I hope this clears some things up. I, it's, it seems kind of obvious on the one hand, but if you don't really think about how everything's connected, it can also be a little bit confusing. So hope this helps. I didn't use an external tuner for this demo. The internal power and SWR meter that's built into the 7300 effectively behaves like a meter that you would put between the radio and the tuner. If you're using a radio along with an external tuner and you connect an SWR power meter between the radio and tuner, you should see results similar to what I was seeing with the 7300 internal meters. If you connect a meter after the tuner, you're going to see what I was seeing with the external meter in this case. At the beginning, I said there's no wrong answer as to where you could place an external meter. Let's consider why you might want to place the meter on either side of an external tuner. You would place an SWR meter after the tuner and closest to the antenna system to monitor your antenna's condition. After you install your antenna, or after you've made any changes to your antenna, you should check the SWR at different frequencies where you're planning to operate. You want to know how the antenna system behaves, not how well the tuner can tune it, at least initially. Your antennas are constantly exposed to sun, wind, rain, and other weather. With an SWR meter after the tuner, you can periodically check your antenna's SWR at different frequencies to see if anything's changed from that initial setup. There are a couple of reasons to place an SWR meter between the radio and the tuner. If you're using an automatic tuner, this placement will let you know that the tuner is working properly and it's presenting a one-to-one -one, or at least close to one-to-one -one SWR to the radio. If this value changes, it could indicate that there's a problem with the tuner or it could be an indirect indication that something has changed with your antenna. If you have a manual tuner, then you must place a meter between the radio and the tuner in order for you to adjust the tuner properly to know which direction you need to make your adjustments in to let you know when you finally reached a one-to-one -one SWR or as close as you're going to get to one-to-one. -one. Many modern radios like the 7300, include built-in SWR and power metering. So you can do this placement without using an external meter. If your radio does have internal SWR and power metering, then the best place to place an external meter would be after any external tuner that you might be using, regardless of whether it's automatic or manual. I hope some of you found this helpful. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD. And this is Ham Radio A to Z.